welcome back to the collegeadvisor.com YouTube channel with your personal college advisors. My name is Finn. And I'm Ramona, and today we'll be talking about everything related to rec letters. What they are, why they matter, how to ask for one, how not to ask for one, and elements of a good rec letter. For all of y'all who do not know what rec letters are, Mona, would you be so kind as to explain what rec letters are? Yes, so colleges and scholarships and other applications often ask for what's called a letter of recommendation as a part of your application. And a letter of rec basically is from some kind of authority figure in your life, um, like a teacher, a counselor, sometimes they can even request it from like your coach or your boss. And they are asked to write about you and why they recommend you, what they feel about you, their experiences with you, etc. Um, so that's what a rec letter is, but Finn, do you want to share why rec letters are really important? Yeah, absolutely. So admissions officers are trying to get kind of an idea of who you are when you're applying to college, and it's really great to see like your grades, how you did in class, and kind of like the materials that you submit, your personal statements, so on and so forth. But it matters a lot, like you're given a lot of credibility to have someone vouch for you, especially another educator, mm. and it oftentimes like an educator that an admissions officer trusts or knows. Um, and so that's why letters of recommendation are important because they speak to someone else's perspective on your academic prowess, your personal characteristics, your ec extracurricular prowess, so on and so like the list goes on. Um, but they're really important, you know, to kind of give that, that secondhand um, look into who you are. So, like Finn said, you really want to get a letter from someone who can speak positively about you, positively about the impact you've created, as well as how you've grown and your character traits. So, typically, college want to see a rec letter from a recent teacher you had. Um, this is because, like Finn said in other videos, they're trying to picture you on their campus. So, if you're now a senior and you need a rec letter, you wouldn't really want to go to your freshman year English teacher because, sure, they may be able to speak positively about you, but if you haven't interacted with them recently, recently, it's not a really up-to-date recommendation letter. Um, so while the best rec letters are from people you have amazing relationships with, you need to kind of keep out, uh, keep a lookout for what colleges require because sometimes they can require letters from specific teachers. For instance, some colleges like BSMD programs or science programs ask for you to specifically get recommendation letters from your science teachers. And this would have stuck for me because I had a horrible relationship with all my science teachers. I was only like boss with like the English and math teachers. So you should really, really look into like who you need those rec letters from. And some even require a recommendation letter from your high school counselor, which can also be really tough if you're like me and you went to a public school where your counselor didn't even know your name. So that's why you sort of need to keep a look out on who you want to ask for a rec letter from based on your relationships, but also who you're required to ask for from based on the application itself. Um, so now that you know who to ask for a rec letter, I'm going to pass it to Finn to tell us how to ask for a rec yeah, letter. Yeah, so absolutely. This is like one of the harder parts and and there are a lot of you know there's no like one answer on how to ask for a rec letter but there are a few wrong answers on how to ask for a rec letter so we'll jump into it so the first thing that you really want to do is like kind of like what mona said you want to be establishing those genuine good connections and so you you want to be kind of like cultivating a relationship with your teachers um starting even in your sophomore year so if there are freshmen sophomores who are watching this like now's the time to like start really getting to know your teachers and, and treating them like people mm. um as opposed to you know <laughs> as someone who's there just to teach you um but like mm. even for juniors like spend that time and really cultivate those relationships um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they yeah because you want them to be able to talk to like about you in a in a genuine positive way and the way in which like to make that easier for them you want to like give them opportunities to see you in a really positive, genuine light. Um, so the second piece of advice is to ask early. Um, we're actually like past the point where I usually would recommend a junior to uh, ask for letters of recommendation, and I do say junior. Mm -hmm. um, you generally, in my personal opinion, want to ask like in the your junior spring for fall senior year applications. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're a junior, it's not too late. You can still like ask for letters yeah. of rec. The other thing that I actually think is really important is to ask like face to face. Um, yeah. If we weren't in the pandemic, I'd say like in person. Um, but I think for now, face to face will suffice. Um, but like don't ask in an email for example you know don't email and be like hi can you please write me a letter of recommendation because that feels really really impersonal and i don't know how many other you know if you just copy and yeah. pasted that email to five other teachers to try and get you know someone totally who's willing to totally write a letter of rec. um 
But if you ask in person, they know that you're taking the time to actually seek them out and and you actually want their their um, specialty. So make sure to like tell your teacher a little bit about like what the letter of recommendation is going for. You don't want your oh, teacher- Oh, that is, that is so right? You don't want your teacher to like write you a letter for, for like a biology program because they're your biology teacher and you're like applying for conservatories. Um, there are other <laughs> problems with that, but like, come on. <laughs> so like, let them know yeah, what yeah, the yeah. hats are, <laughs> what's going yeah, on. Mm -hmm. um, that's a must do. Um, don't be afraid to ask for a letter of recommendation. I know that it can be sometimes a little bit scary to like go to your teacher and ask for something, especially when they're, you know, kind of put in this position of power with, you know, grades and you know, oh, so yeah, on yeah, and so yeah. forth. But one, teachers actually genuinely enjoy writing letters of recommendation, right? Like they are teachers for a reason. And so, um, you know, if you really do, if you manage to establish those genuine, really wonderful connections with your teachers, they will want to write a letter of recommendation about you and and sometimes you know teachers will actually ask to write letters of recommendation about you and that's how you know you've done it right but then the other like the flip side of that coin is that they know that writing letters of recommendation for students applying to college is like part of their job and so yeah it happens every it year it happens every I, year I, and they you know they're not like oh a rec what? letter i've never heard of one it's like what <laughs> they're expecting it they are expecting it so like yeah. ask you gotta do it and they know they know that you're gonna come ask. Um, it's gonna be a matter of time. Um, yeah. Then once you've submitted your applications, once they've submitted their letters of recommendation, be sure to thank them. You know, send them a thank you night. Totally. Buy them some chocolates. You know, make it cute. Buy them some chocolate. Um, yeah. Add an inside joke exactly, with your thank exactly. you card. Beautiful. Exactly. But like, if you, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's like part of the genuine relationship, right? Like. The, in yeah. developing those relationships is not just a means to an end of a recommendation letter. It is an end in and of itself of like having a relationship with someone who educates you. And so you want to continue that that on um, by by thanking them and, and being courteous and kind. Yeah. And, yeah, and don't feel like you have to do something extravagant. Like I know some people at my school were like, getting like really bougie gifts so and i was just like so i mean like a card i really think the thought really does count yeah. like a card is really nice Again, you don't know send an email um, do a card don't send an email don't be like yeah. hey what's up g like thanks for thanks for writing that red letter like i'll keep you posted <laughs> sent, from uh, sent from my iphone sent from my iphone like um, Finn wouldn't know because touch. Finn has been using an <laughs> Finn literally sent from my iPad because I didn't get a phone until this past month. Oh my month. god, it is true. It is true. I will admit it I is did true. not have a phone for about two and a half years. Wow. He's not like other boys. <laughs> oh my god. Disconnecting to reconnect Disconnect a series. <laughs> Um, okay, anyways, now we're going to sort of talk about a good versus a bad recommendation letter, and I'm going to be talking about the bad rec letters. <laughs> um, not speaking for personal experience, uh, I hope no one, none of my teachers are watching this, um, but in general, sometimes when you ask for a rec letter, your teacher might ask you for your resume, and it comes from a good place because they want to see your resume, see your accomplishments, see what you've done, so they can write about them. But I would personally advise against this because teachers who ask for your resume before writing your rec letter likely are just regurgitating your resume, which you already put on your college application. So if the content of your rec letter Letter doesn't really speak to something the college hasn't already learned about you, it's not a good rec letter because the rec letter is precious real estate. Um, for instance, uh, I guess you can kind of think of it like a Yelp review where like you can already find the menu for the restaurant on the Yelp site. The menu for the restaurant is like your common app. And so if you read a Yelp review and someone's just like, they shall noodles for ten dollars like it's it's literally like that's literally like teachers who are using your resume to write your rec letter it's like that's not a helpful yelp review um and so in that vein there's a big difference between your teacher just writing like ramona one best delegate in model un it's like i already listed that on my common app but if this teacher has been my advisor in model un and they've also been my teacher for like other classes and they can write like ramona has been a presidency in two years and she's like really grown in xxx ways her personality is xxx her character traits are blah blah um i just just really think that the rec letter should speak more about your character than about your achievements um yeah yeah so let's also talk about good recommendation yeah. letters right like this is ideally what you want so the best line that you can receive in any re letter of recommendation is this is the best blank i've seen in my career um mm. you know or like the top of you know 
the top of you know the last 10 years worth of students um in whatever mm. right it doesn't have to you know it can be for example i was really interested in theater design so i in one of my like letters of recommendation which actually my theater teacher let me read which was very kind of him uh he wrote that i was um, the best lighting design student he had ever encountered in his career, which I really appreciate um, because that shows like how he's supporting me and it also speaks kind of to this passion that I have a lot of other evidence to, to you know, I wrote my comment at that say about lighting design, for example, um, mm. you know, and so both of that letter of recommendation, you know, to show that outside perspective, as well as the le like common app essay to show my inside perspective, those two work in uh, tandem, yes. the synergy between the yes. two. Um, the synergy. the synergy. Wait, I really like that. I really like that. Just because there's, yeah. Well, there's a big difference between like me saying on my personal essay I've struggled versus like my teachers yeah. then also exactly. saying I've struggled. Like, exactly. I just feel like it backs it up so much. Exactly. Restaurant analogy. It's like the restaurant saying, this is the best restaurant. It's like, are you really going to believe the restaurant Whoa. saying it's good? But if all the Yelp yeah. you say the best it's like the best restaurant. Then you yeah. believe it. Exactly. Oh, I love your, anyways. Oh. <laughs> so like, that, sorry, sorry, sorry. I just love like this. Synergize to really make it clear that that was something that I really, mm -hmm. really enjoying and supposedly was good at anyway. God bless. Yeah. So ideally though, your letter of recommendation, in addition to like having that line, cause that's the best thing you can do, but there are a lot of good letters of recommendation that you can get mm. that will not have that. Um, but ideally what yeah. they want to do is they want to be demonstrating something that can't be you know, read in that resume, right? They want to be expounding upon that resume. They want to be giving much more depth and, and allowing the reader to like picture you as you are it, through someone else's eyes. It also like makes the reader, like the person who's reading your application, like want to root for you, right? You know, they yeah. are trying, they're looking for certain characteristics. They're looking for people who they think are gonna be a good fit on campus. And so, yeah. you know, if you're a good fit on your high school campus for X, Y, and Z reason they're also looking for, this is a really great way that the admissions officer can get a sense that you too will fit in really well on the campus of their school. I also want to add that rec letters contextualize things for the admissions office and that can be really good. And I say this all the time, but college applications are evaluated in context. So an example of context would be maybe you're really worried about your 24 on your ACT because you're applying to Dartmouth and the average is a perfect 36. So in your mind, a 24, when Dartmouth's average is a 36 can look really bad, um, but that's outside of context. But maybe in context, your score is actually really impressive because, you know, a 24 is higher than your school's average. Maybe you held a part-time job, maybe your ESL. There's so many factors. So whatever it is, context changes how people view your accomplishment. And that can be good or bad, but a good ref letter can provide context that really can change the admissions officer's perspective on things. So I personally did not read my rec letters, but I do remember like reading my Harvard application with notes and they were saying like, these are glow glowing letters of recommendation because like they really speak to like everything she overcame, which we like could not have gleaned from just like the 150 characters I got Wait, on my so section, you know? Yeah. I, I, have, yeah, I my have Harvard, to yeah. email my teachers and be like, hey, can I read the letter of recs that you wrote for me? I low-key have them like sealed in an envelope because there's like this one scholarship I forgot to submit like physically mailed in so I have my sealed rec letters but I just haven't opened it I'm like too I'm like too afraid I'm like really afraid um but I know that they were good because I like because on the Harvard like Harvard um application they like rank you from one to five mm -hmm. in multiple different categories there's a New York Times article about it if you want to learn more but I like read my released Harvard application notes Wait. and it was like the things that I got ranked in like the highest the lowest it was like athletic ability like lowest and I was like Wait, so really what did you get on but athletic the highest, ability? Did you get yeah. a four? I think I got it. Wait, I think the highest is one. Well, right? highest one is, is one. the best. Four yeah. is the worst. I got I got a three oh, okay. on athletic ability. Nice yeah, I did some sports. Um, and then it was like academics, surprisingly a three. Um, oh, wow. But then, but for me, but for me, it was like personality gleaned from the personal essays um, and the rec letters, it was like a one. And I think that's honestly what got, like the rec that's letters true. contributed that's true. so much. Yeah. And the interview also, I, there were weird questions. Like the interview was like oh, the questions for the interviewer to evaluate, we'll do an interview video, but it was like, would this person make a good roommate? Like that was literally wow. one of the categories that my interview from Harvard had to evaluate me on. It said, would this person make a good roommate? Hmm. One. And so it's like, these these are the things people are thinking about when they're reading your rec letter. It's picturing you on their campus, picturing you interacting with like all the other people they're admitting. Wow. So. 
Wait, that's so cute. Content is very important. Curricular score. Now I'm so curious. Wait, I forgot. I can like we can do a whole video about like revealing yeah. our Harvard in you know, like kind of notes or whatever. I don't know if I'm like that would be ready to reveal that though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't. I don't know. If you want to see that? I, give I this video some yeah. love. Yes. I don't know yes. If Comment down below if you want to see that. <laughs> There's some other like miscellaneous things about recommendation letters that are just like kind of important to know. So here they are. You'll be asked to waive your rights to view your letters of recommendation. Um, so under FERPA, which is like Family Education Right Protection Act, something like that. Yes. I don't know. Is that right? Is that right? Did I get it? <laughs> that, so that honestly sounds right. That honestly sounds right. I made it up, I made it up on the spot. Right. Someone tell us down below if that's correct or not. <laughs> Brad um, is literally going to add an edit for what it really stands uh, yeah, for. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, something like, different. Burp, burp, you got it. Incorrect. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, that, that would generally give you the right to view your letters of recommendation, but your teachers like want, you know, you want your teachers to be able to speak genuinely and honestly about you without fear of like retribution. And so, so generally you're gonna wanna waive your right to view those letters of recommendation um, so that your teachers can just write those letters. I don't know, the threat was mm -hmm. lost at some point. Waiving your rights, it can be scary not knowing what people are writing yeah. about you, but you shouldn't be worried if you asked someone you really trusted to write that letter. Like if you're worried about waiving your rights because you're scared what that teacher would say for you, maybe you like ask a different teacher. Um, but it's important to remember that your teachers are there to help you. And if you are still worried, I would honestly just be straight up with your teacher yeah. and tell them how much this yeah. program means to you and ask if they can if they can write a strong letter or not um teachers will be honest with you like i remember one of my teachers was like hey i actually don't feel like we've interacted in the capacity that this program wants to know about you so i don't feel that i could write like a strong letter for this specific program um and i was like very thankful for that honesty because i went and asked uh, someone else yeah that's that's really awesome that yeah. they actually came in and talked to you about that well, I feel like they'll be honest if they ask you, because I was yeah. just like, hey, like, hey, Eats Defer, like, I really, I, <laughs> I, I just, this program means a lot to me, but I know that, like, it's specifically for, like, journalism, and, like, you haven't even, like, read any of my articles, so, like, would you feel confident writing this or no? And he was like, nah. <laughs> and I was like, word. Womp. <laughs> so, <laughs> womp. Thank you so much for making it to the end. We're here to stay, so subscribe, get comfy, and come by with us. Also, we do read all the comments on our videos, so if you have any questions, please leave them down below. And Finn and I will do our best to either make a video about it or answer them in yeah. the next video. Okay. We also have a series of free webinars and blogs about applying to college you can check out below. And do not forget to follow us on TikTok and Instagram at Join College Advisor for more exclusive updates. We also have a free app, so check that out. Oh, shoot. I keep forgetting about no, the app. No, it's fine. It's fine. I understand. <laughs> we mentioned it last video, but also check out our app. It's really good for, like, the timeline of college applications. Yeah, that is true. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>